Hello, my name is Caden Stevens, Technical Marketing Engineer for Cisco's Software Defined Access Solution Team. This is the first video in our four-part series of building SDA from scratch. And today we'll start out with the design aspect. Since this is a video about starting out from scratch, we'll do a brief overview about what SD Access is, then jump into Cisco DNA Center, where we will first integrate Cisco Identity Services Engine, or ICE for short, with DNA Center. Discover our network devices, then we will design our first site, configure our network settings, and assign our IP pools as well. So what is Cisco's SD Access solution? All right, so Cisco's SD Access solution is an embedded solution within the Cisco DNA Center network controller. SDA provides automated, dynamic, and multi-tier segmentation for user device and application traffic. Old school methods are unable to scale securely across the network, and this is where SDA comes in to save the day by using a single network fabric composed of LAN and wireless LAN in which user policy can be automated so organizations can ensure appropriate access control and application experience are set for any user or any device to any application, user, or device across the network. The result from that is a consistent user experience anywhere without compromising on security. If you'd like to get more familiar with SDA before we hop into Cisco DNA Center, please check out different SDA videos on our channel that go into various topics on a deeper level or go check out the latest Cisco DNA Center data sheet. All right, let's take a look at our underlay topology first. I have three different sites, campus, branch, and data center. I'm using two ASR1Ks with redundancy as my border and control plane nodes in my campus site and two 9300s as my edge nodes. In my data center, I'm using a ISR4K as my border and control plane node and a 9300 as my edge. In my branch, I'm using a 9300 as a fabric in a box, which means it will be deployed as a border, control plane, and edge node all in one. I have two switches representing my remote network and a Fusion device and another ISR4K as my transit control plane device. Lastly, I am also using some Cisco switches that are hosting my shared services and my DHCP server. In my lab, I use layer three point-to-point -point interconnects between all the network devices. I use the ISIS routing protocol between edge and border nodes, and I'm also using the border gateway protocol or BGP for short between the border routers and the fusion switch. Let's check out our agenda for this video. Today, I'll be talking about how to integrate ICE with Cisco DNA Center, network settings, discovery, design and network hierarchy, and also IP address pools. Let's go ahead and open up our remote session. And getting started with our demo here, wherever you are in your SD access journey, it's important to understand the components that make up SDA, which are design, provision, policy, and assurance. Our first step, since we're building from the ground up, is to integrate the Identity Services Engine, or ICE for short, with Cisco DNA Center. There's a couple of prerequisites in order to integrate ICE, and that's that PXGrid and ERS APIs need to be enabled. First, we need to enable ERS for reading and writing capabilities. So I'll go ahead and get logged into ICE here. And once we're logged into ICE, I'll head over to Administration system and then settings and here on the left hand side i'll scroll down to api settings and then i'll click on api service settings ers api calls are used for things like certificate exchanges and updating ice with cisco dna center orchestrated group based policies or sgts and contracts we'll go ahead and toggle on ers for reading write capabilities hit save and OK. Now that that's done, we'll enable PX Grid. We'll head over to Deployment. We'll click on our host name and scroll all the way down to the bottom. And before we enable this, we need to know that Cisco DNA Center will subscribe to the PX Grid publisher in order to retrieve contextual data as well as SGTs. After our integration is complete, the scalable groups in the group-based policy dashboard in Cisco DNA Center will be updated reflecting the existing list of SGTs in ICE. Let's go ahead and toggle this on. 
scroll down and hit save. All right, so now we will integrate ICE with Cisco DNA Center by going to Cisco DNA Center and getting logged in here. Heading to system and then going to settings. And then here on the left hand side, we'll scroll down to external services and then we'll go to authentication and policy servers. We'll hit add ice and we'll go ahead and type in our ice credentials here on the right hand side. And for the fully qualified domain name, this is the host name of ice dot whatever domain name that you're working with. So mine is actually going to be admin.cisco.com. We'll click on advanced settings. And then I want to make sure connect to PX grid is enabled. It should be enabled by default. And I'm using radius as the protocol. Everything else will be default and I'll click add. And then we'll get a nice warning message here. It says, this is the first time Cisco DNA Center has seen this certificate from ICE and it is not yet trusted. Do you want to accept the certificate and establish trust? And I will accept this. All right, we see here that the integration of our ICE server was successful. So now the first thing that I wanna get added before we start our discovery process is our device credentials. So I'll go ahead and head over to design and then click on network settings and then click on device credentials. The credentials that we're gonna to add today are CLI and SNMP read and write. I'll go ahead and get started by clicking manage credentials, click add and then click CLI. And I'll go ahead and start adding my CLI credentials. I'll go ahead and click assign credential to site global because I do want this to be the credentials that are used for all of my devices in my network. I'll hit save. And I'll speed through this process, but I'll go ahead and add the SNMP read and write credentials as well. All right, once all my credentials are added here, I'm gonna head back over to network. And I want to add the ICE server that we just put into play. So I'll go ahead and click add server and click AAA, press okay. And I'm only gonna add it for client endpoint, but you're welcome to add it for your network as well. I'll go ahead and click ICE and then click the ICE host that we're working with. After I've done that, I'll scroll down and I'll go ahead and hit save. All right, we're ready to start our discovery process. So I'll go ahead and head over to that. We'll head over to tools and then hit discovery. Now I do have two previously existing device discoveries I could reutilize, but we're gonna go ahead and create our own for this video. I'll click on add discovery and then give it a discovery name. And for the discovery type, I'll click on IP address range since I know all the IPs of my devices. For the preferred management IP address, I'll click use loopback. And the reason behind this is because LISP, the routing protocol that SD Access uses, uses the loopback interface as the routing locator. I'll go ahead and scroll down. And we'll see that the three credentials that I set up earlier are here and are selected by default. We'll go ahead and add one more here, which is NetConf. I'll click on Add Credentials. And then on the right hand side, I'll click NetConf. And NetConf uses port 830 by default on Cisco devices. Once you type in the port number here, you can go ahead and save as global to apply to all of your devices. 
and then you can hit save. Since I already have my NetConf credentials set up on Cisco DNA Center, I'm just going to go ahead and X out of this portion. We'll scroll down. NetConf is already set up. And under advanced, the protocol order will be defaulted to SSH and we'll leave it as is. Hit discover. And we'll start the discovery process now. We'll see our discovery has been queued. Now it's starting. And now it's in progress. I'll go ahead and pause the video here and then fast forward to when all of our devices have been discovered. All right, I'm back and we see that we have 16 devices overall that were identified by Cisco DNA Center, 12 successful and four that were unreachable. And I also see that I have some net comp failures here on the right hand side, but that's okay. I'll fix these net comp failures at a later time. But for now, let's go ahead over to inventory. So we'll go over to provision and then inventory. So we'll see here our devices got added, but not all the information has populated yet. So I'll go ahead and let this sync process go to completion and then I'll come back when everything's ready. All right, so not too long after everything has populated now, all my device host names have populated on the left hand side. And we see that everything is successfully being managed by Cisco DNA Center. The next step that I want to get into is our network hierarchy. You can click the short link here, or we can head over to design and then network hierarchy. Okay, I want to get started and add some sites. We have a default area here, which is named global. I want to add an area and I'll call it the San Jose campus. I'll click add. And we have our first area. I'll walk through adding one building here with a couple of floors. And then for the two following buildings that I'll be adding, I'll go ahead and speed through that process and show you at the end what I've done. So we'll go ahead and hover over the area that we just made and click add building. And I'll call this first building building four. I'll give it an address. So we'll see as I was typing, the recommended addresses started popping up. So I'll go ahead and click this first one, which is the correct one I'm looking for. And I'll click add. All right, we'll expand this out and see our building has populated. I'll go ahead and click add floor. So we can add two floors to our building. I'll name this floor, floor one. And I'll click add. And okay. Expand this out once more and I see that our floor is populated. Let's add our second floor and click add once more. All right, that's the workflow of adding an area, a building and a couple of floors to go into your building. I'll go ahead and head into global and add two more additional areas with their associated buildings. All right, I'm all done here. So we see that under global, I have three different areas, which are San Jose campus, site one and site two. And under San Jose campus area, I have building four with two different floors in our building. I have site one that has a data center and site two that has a branch. After we've added all of our sites, you're welcome to head over to network settings. The next thing I wanna get started with is IP address pools. And we'll start making pools at the global level and then reserve IP ranges in the subsequent levels below. IP pools at the global level will most commonly be slash 16s. And then when we reserve our ranges, we'll come down and scale to most commonly slash 24s. But this, of course, all depends on your network. When constructing your IP pools, it's important to keep SDA related constructs in mind, like layer three overlays, layer three border handoffs, guest overlays, your extended nodes, and access points you'll be using, and multicast. I will step through making our first pool, but just like when we were making our physical sites, I will speed up the video as I populate the rest of my pools. So I'll go ahead and head over to global and click add. And I'll add our first pool here, which I'm gonna make it a corporate pool. 
for the type i'll leave it as generic and the ip subnet i'll go ahead and give it a 10.1.0.0 and for the prefix length, I'll make it a slash 16. And I'll go ahead and click save. I'm going to go ahead and populate five more pools here. So I'll go ahead and get started on that. All right, now that I finished adding all my global IP pools, I'm gonna go ahead and head into each different building and reserve an IP address range that falls within these subnets that I've made. So I'll go ahead and get started with building four. And I'll click reserve. And I wanna reserve an IP address range for building four's access points. So I'll go ahead and type in B4-AP. And for the type, I'll leave it as generic. I'll scroll down and for the global pool that I wanna use, I'll hit the global V4 pool. For the prefix length, I'll select the slash 24. And I'll go ahead and give it a subnet here of 172.16.4.0. And I'll scroll down and then I'll go ahead and click reserve. All right, so that's the process of reserving an IP address range in your respective pools. I'll go ahead and pause the recording here and then come back when I fully populated all my different reserve pools. All right, I've just finished reserving all my different IP address ranges for my branch, data center, and for my building floor, which is under my San Jose campus. That concludes this demo. All right, this is a good stopping point as the next piece is the provisioning process and we're gonna assign our devices to their corresponding fabric sites and give them fabric roles there too as well. Thank you for checking out the first video in our building SDA from scratch series where we designed our first site hierarchy and went into their corresponding network settings. If you wanna find out more about SDA, please feel free to go to check out more videos on our channel and remember to like, comment, and subscribe. Take care.